All right, everybody, how's it going? This is part two of our Five Essentials introduction series. Um, let me know that you can hear me. Somebody who's on, let me know that everything's good here. Okay, so we're going to get started here, and I'm going to wait for some people to get on here. I see that. Got a few happening here. So let me know where you're coming from. Let me know where you're watching from. I only see who's watching if you put a comment on there. Loud and clear. Thanks, Jocelyn. Okay, so we are continuing with our introductory series. We're doing nutrition today, and it's going to be nutrition principles, uh, meaning I know a lot of you like the idea of just kind of getting <clears throat> all of the lists of what to eat and what not to eat. Um, that's that's something that um, is helpful, but I don't think that teaches the principles as well. Um, and it gives you kind of it kind of like gives you a fish as opposed to teaching you how to fish. So we're gonna we're gonna teach you how to fish with this series, and I'm gonna try to keep this one short and sweet for you. So we're just gonna get started. What we're gonna do is if you, <coughs> if you have questions or if you have any specific comments, please put them down there. Let's be interactive. This is very informal. Um, just throw it on there. Any thoughts that you have, any questions that you have, if I can answer them, I will. If I have no idea what the answer is, I'm going to say, I don't know. And we can maybe look it up and find it for you. So let's get started. All right, everybody, what do you see here? Put your answer down in the comments. What do you see? We've got some Totino's pizza rolls. I see some Nilla wafers and Fruit Loops up there. Those are good. Um, got like Coke, Sprite, and then another Coke at the bottom of the fridge. That's important. You got to have a lot of that. Syrups and ketchups and Hungry Jack and a lot of a lot of processed stuff. Yeah, junk food, right? So what, when I look at that, what I actually see is, well, first thing I see is like, well, that's exactly what my fridge used to look like uh, in college when I lived with eight different guys. Um, and that was literally what it looked like. Ours was probably a little bit worse than that. And it probably included a little bit more beer, but that was basically what I used to eat is all processed, sugary, non-foods um, or food-like products, I would say, because it's not actual food that's in there. These are, <coughs> these are food-like products. Uh, there's nothing in there that's God-made. All of it is man-made. And when you eat man-made foods for long enough, your body loses its normal functioning. You, you can't express innately what your body was meant to do because innately it requires God-made food for it to carry out all those processes within your cells. So what I see here is, is dysfunction. I see disease. I see depression and anxiety. This, is, this, this picture is, is a recipe for mental health disorders. It's a recipe for digestive distress and, and dysfunction. It's a recipe for low energy and doctor visits and medications. And um, yeah, Charlene, how do you get a picture of my fridge? I know, right? And this is my fridge too. And it's, it, it, this is how I grew up. And, you know, it's, uh, is it recoverable? Yes. But this is where disease comes from, guys. The foods that you eat is so so important to your body. And if you do not follow this essential, they're essentials for a reason. Uh, they're, they're essentials because if you don't follow them, then there's consequences. So we've got to talk about them as though they are essential. And if we're not following the essentials, especially nutrition, well, you've got a bunch of diseases. And right now, it's like, what's the urgency? Like, you know, who cares? Like, why do I have to worry about nutrition? Who, who gives a, a darn? Right. Well, 63% of us are overweight and 36 are obese. That's number one in the world or worst in the world. One in every three women, one in every two men are diagnosed with cancer. That's the worst in the world. Five out of six Americans are going to die of heart disease or cancer. That's the worst in the world. 28 million U.S. children are on psychotropic medications. And this is a stat from a couple of years back. Right now, it's even worse than that. And if you think about that, you're like, well, <laughs> it didn't used to be this way, you know? Like when I was younger, that you know, kids weren't on all those drugs and it wasn't like that. You're right. It wasn't this way. Things have changed and the, it's the way that we're taking care of our bodies that's not only leading to 
um, pains and and digestive issues, but it leads to real chronic sickness. It leads to disease process. It leads to early death. And I really don't want that for all you guys, which is why we're doing these webinars. We don't want you to succumb to these statistics and to become one of these statistics. So we have to do something different in order to achieve the results. And it all starts in the mind. And so the mental barriers that that we come across so often <coughs> that I, I'll sit and talk to patients and um, and it'll be like, well, there's so much information out there, the, the conflicting information. You know, like I, I go to, I go to, uh, I go online to this site and it says to do this. Well, this other online site says not to do that. And WebMD says to do this, but this natural health site, site says to not do that. And it's like, well, who do I trust? Who do I believe? I go to the, the, um, the bookstore and the nutrition section is bigger than the history section or the health section. It's like, there's so much information. And so, so that can jam people up in their minds. And then what, what we end up doing is nothing instead of trying to simplify it or find the right source. Not wanting to feel deprived is a big barrier too. And like, I don't like feeling deprived. I think, I, I think, uh, uh, what you find is that with the plans that we teach, it's it's not about feeling deprived. It's not about depriving yourself of foods um, or even saying that you can eat something or you can't eat something. Um, it's about freedom and it's about making choices for health, not just to avoid uh, symptoms or problems. Unsustainable diets is another big one. Like there's these diets out there that you you sign up online and they literally ship you on dry ice a meal for you to eat like a frozen meal. And it's like, well, that's, that's not a sustainable thing. Like anything that you, you can only do for a few weeks or even a couple months is, is not, uh, it's not sustainable. That's, that's not something that's, that you're going to be able to do for a long time. So, so we got to get rid of the unsustainable diets, short lived goals versus values, i.e. lose 10 pounds. So if you're, if your goal is, I want to lose 10 pounds, I want to lose 10 pounds. But well, what are you going to do as soon as you lose that ten pounds? You're gonna you're gonna stop all the things that you were doing that was good for you, if that was your main goal, and then you're gonna just uh, probably end up putting it back on. The research shows that people put more on afterwards. Um, so we want to get rid of the short lived goals and attach more of a value system to why we're eating healthy. Because you have if you have a good why for a long term vision for your future, then you're going to be able to t- tackle those day-to-day challenges uh, budget concerns like it costs too much i get it you know you go to the organic section and you're like whoa that costs so much more i can get so much conventional for the price of one organic and that's i, I get that but um but health health care costs from being sick that's what bankrupts people and most of the time it's a matter of where you're allocating your money. I mean, obviously, if eating food is better than not eating food, um, like you, you want to be eating food. Like when the, we we did like a like a food donation um, uh, to charity, and it's like, oh, well, that's not organic food. It's like, yeah, but it's food, and it's better that these kids eat food than 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 not food. However, uh, you want to be paying attention to the quality of your food, and that's going to end up saving you money in the long term. And then past failures, you know, you got this little birdie in your ear saying, hey, you fail every time you you start something, so why even start now? Or like, this plan won't work for you because, because you know, you, you, can never, you can never sustain any of these commitments that you make. You know, like, there, there's this negativity that comes up in our heads, and so we've got to kind of reprogram the software. We've got to, we've got to cut this we had to cut these, these mental barriers out. Um, because if that's, if these barriers are holding you back, then you can end up, you can end up all of a sudden with chronic disease and you look back and it's like, Oh wow. I, those barriers don't even make sense anymore. See, like once you lose your health, nothing else matters. When you lose your health, you lose everything, everything. You ever know anybody that's been diagnosed with with a a late stage cancer and all of a sudden their perspective on every single thing in their life is completely, completely flipped upside down. And all of the little, the little burdensome things, all the little annoyances that they, that they stressed about before 
become completely meaningless and all the things that are highest priority and the things that are most important to them, the people that are most important to them immediately become the only things that they can even see that matter. And so let's reprogram the software. Let's let's change our mindset about this because it matters for you and matters for your family in the long run. Like I said, today's principles, um, this is where you're going to get a lot of the uh, uh, the how to, meaning the the ex- like what to eat, what not to eat. Um, you're gonna want to get this book if you don't have it. Uh, you know, most of you guys who are watching this have it because your patients at the office. Um, but if this was shared with a friend or and you don't have this, you want to get this book because this book lays out. It's it's like a review for today. It's gonna lay out everything that we're talking about, but it's gonna give you more specifics with exactly what to eat, exactly what not to eat. All right. And there's a bunch of recipes in the back. It's really awesome. So we're going to bust some myths today. The first myth I want to bust is this myth of genetics, meaning, hey, if I have bad genes, well, that means I'm going to end up with all the same problems that my mom and dad had. And because I have this genetic, I have this genetic tendency, and that's my identity is this genetic issue that I have. And because of that, blah, 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 I'm screwed. Here's the deal is that that genetics do play a role in your health, but All of the research that's coming out, and it is getting stronger and stronger in the field of epigenetics, which actually is um, the body can can change the expression of those genes by way of lifestyle. So you can literally turn genes on and turn genes off based on what you eat and how much you exercise and how your nervous system is functioning. Basically, following the essentials, even your mindset and your thoughts can change the way that your genes are expressed, literally. And that's not like hocus pocus. That's not some esoteric idea for the future. It is real and there's a ton of research on it. If you want to look up um, epigenetics or or there's a doctor um, uh, that uh, teaches on, it's called Dirty Genes. If you look up Dirty Genes on YouTube, he's got tons, tons and tons of, uh, of, Uh, research laid out about epigenetics and how you can change the expression so that you don't have to live those same um, those same problems if you just change your lifestyle and that's where the value system comes in if we're going to be passing down genes to our family but the but the lifestyle matters more than the genes well then we have to be the one setting the example um and it's you know like it says here 95 percent of diseases are, are are actually caused by lifestyle habits so setting a good example for the kids is so, so important. We've got to be, do, be doing it first. You can't expect your kids to be eating vegetables and, and healthy foods and staying away from sugar um, if they're catching you do that also. So we got to we gotta be setting that example. Myth bus number two is that a calorie is a calorie. All calories are created equal. I think we all know that's false. Now, this is kind of an old old idea, but you know, you look at this like a Twinkie is 150 calories and a, and a handful of almonds is 150 calories. You know, which one's healthier, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, it's not just about the calories. It's about the the quality of the foods that you're bringing in. And I would go as far as saying it's about what it does inside your cells. I don't even count calories. I don't care about calories. Um, I mean, at some point, you got to count. I mean, at some point, you got to not overeat to the point of exploding through your stomach. Like, you, you got to not do that. However, within reasonable amounts of food. It's not about the calories. It's about the quality. It's about what it's doing to your hormones. It's about the nutrients that are in there. Because if you eat a high, high level of nutrients, then your body uses it properly. It keeps your hormones working properly and your metabolism works like it's supposed to. Um, You know, these Twinkies are so toxic. They don't even burn. If you, I saw a video where there's a Twinkie and they tried to burn it with a blowtorch and it wouldn't even burn because it was just made up of all synthetic fats and and oils and who knows what's in that thing. I think that's why they they banned it, um, banned making it. Maybe they came back because there were a lot, of, a lot of fans of Twinkies in the, in, in the United States. Sugar. Every year, this is how much sugar that Americans eat, each American. Now, here's that, what that comes out to is like a, it's like a, five pound bag of sugar every 10 days. It's amazing how much sugar we eat. One of the biggest ones is, is drinking pop. You know, if you drink pop time to get rid of that, that's got high fructose corn syrup in it. It's, it's terrible for you. Um, 
it's just loading you up on sugar. If you drink Gatorades and Powerades and uh, those types of drinks, it's, it's just loaded with sugar. You can call it, you can call it electrolytes if you want to, but but really it's just sugar. Um, you know, even like the Starbucks drinks, the Frappuccino, Crappuccinos with the with the whipped cream and all the caramel and and the, the you know they're pumping the vanilla into. Th- There's so much sugar in that stuff, um, and it can get disguised by the coffee, but the bottom line is you're just loading your body up on sugar and sugar is so devastating to your health. Um, where else is it hidden? Well, it's not just in the sweet stuff, even breads and pastas and lunch meats. You know, you can read the things, pizza, soup, sauces, all of the, all of these foods that are, that are boxed, all the foods that, um, that you can become kind of addicted to, you become addicted to it because there's sugar in it. Like why is there sugar in mayonnaise? Uh, so you can become addicted to it. Why is there sugar in ketchup? Um, so when you go back to the store, you're like, oh, I really like that ketchup. And you grab that same ketchup. Well, that's just the one that has so much sugar in it. And they found that sugar is actually eight times more addictive than cocaine. And it was a rat study, but rat brains, when it comes to metabolism, actually are pretty some pretty accurate for what happens in human brains. And uh, And sugar actually triggers this the um the same uh oh, reward sites as cocaine does yet sugar was more addictive um sugar absolutely is a drug it is devastating to your health don't fall into the the notion of yeah but everyone eats it or yeah but it's fine it's this is just what we eat we've always eaten this way we've we've always eaten this at barbecues we've always eaten this for birthdays. We've always done this, you know, like traditions are okay. Having a sweet every once in a while is okay. But, but what ends up happening is we take that and we do that all the time. Um, and so we got to get away from the sugar. It, it creates disease. It causes so many problems. Here's top 10 reasons to avoid sugar. First of all, it creates obesity. Obesity is not caused by fat, by eating fat. You know, you can eat a lot of fat and be very, very skinny. It's actually the way that it works. But sugar causes you to be fat. It it causes acidity in the body. Cancer grows in an acid in an acid environment, not an alkaline environment. So the more acid that you produce inside your body when you eat sugar, the more of an environment that cancer loves to grow in. It actually causes inflammation. So inflamed joints, joint pain. You know, people come in there like, oh, I'm, I'm still hurting. I'm still hurting. I'm still hurting. Okay, what are you eating? Well, oh, what are you talking about? Right, what are you eating? I don't know. I just eat the stuff that I eat. Okay, well, that's a lot of where your pain is coming from. And so often people will have inflamed joints. And when they change their nutrition, especially the step of cutting out sugar, their pain can go down from like an eight out of 10 all the way down to a three out of 10 just by cutting sugar. So, pain sensitivity to the brain, inflammation inside the joints, inflammation inside your arteries even, we'll get to that, caused by sugar. Sugar is the primary reason for high cholesterol. Again, it's not fats, it's actually sugars that cause high cholesterol. Um, Sugar causes hormone and metabolism imbalances. So if your hormones are all out of whack, stop eating sugar and watch them start to heal. Um, Sugar's on uh, a fast track to diabetes, um, it's a known toxin. It actually is toxic to the body uh, to eat sugar. And then uh, it leads to heart disease. It's an anti-nutrient. What, what's really cool about this is, uh, what's not cool about it actually, but the, this whole idea of anti-nutrient, because if if you have an anti-nutrient, it's not only not giving your cells what they need, it's actually blocking other nutrients from coming in and giving your cell what it needs. And if if the health of the body is determined by the health of your cells, then if you are taking in anti-nutrients, you're blocking your cells ability to even get what they need. And of course, that leads to chronic disease, cancers, low energy, inflammation, and everything. And then promoting cancer, we know that's true. There's a there's a study that's done that well, well, I mean, you can you can see it. If you ever looked at a PET scan, if you go on Google Images and click PET scan, P-E-T, uh, all it's all it'll show you is is a, a, a picture of a, a, an Im- imaging where there's these, these colorful spots. Those colorful spots show up where the cancer is. How do they create those colorful spots on the radio, uh, on the radiology image? By feeding the patient sugar 
and cancer loves sugar so much that it grabs the cancer cells grab onto the sugar and eats them and then what what ends up happening is the metabolism of that sugar shows up on the scan so it uh, they actually use the fact that cancer loves sugar in pet scans that's how pet scans work so you don't want to be feeding sugar to your cancer cells um, unless you're getting a PET scan, all right? And this is what sugar does to the cells. And I'm going to walk you through this. This is a life-changing slide right here, okay? And if you can just bear with me on it, it's not that complicated. I just want to show you. Sugar can either go into one of two places, okay? It can go into the cell and become energy. That's a good thing, right? Or it gets stored onto your body as fat, especially around the midsection, okay? Those are the two places it can go. So sugar, if you eat a normal amount of sugar, and, and on the left there, the normal cell, G is glucose, okay? Glucose is sugar. So you eat a normal amount of glucose, sugar, throughout a day, you're gonna create an, a hormone called insulin, okay? Insulin is, it's normal. What insulin does is it gathers the sugar and makes sure that not too much sugar is in your blood. You can only have two to three teaspoons of sugar circulating throughout your blood at any given time. So that's why insulin goes up to gather more of that sugar. Um, and it keeps your keeps you from dying. So then the insulin attaches to those insulin receptors, those little tick marks on the left, and that allows the sugar to come into the cell and create energy. That's normal. That's a really good situation. That's where we have good streamlined energy and not too much insulin. Here's the problem. Most Americans eat like the one on the right. That yellow arrow on the right, that's how much sugar we're eating. We're eating a ton of sugar. Two to three teaspoons is, is all your body can handle. We, we end up taking in nine teaspoons just after breakfast, just from breakfast. And so what ends up happening, you eat that sugary type of breakfast and you drink a big cup of orange juice, which we think is healthy because it's fruit, but it's so much sugar and cereal and maybe a bagel. And then all of a sudden you jack up your insulin like crazy. And you have this incredible, incredibly high insulin response, which is not normal. And it's so not normal that your that your insulin receptors can't handle it. So it starts to just break down the insulin receptors and it's you you end up down regulating insulin receptors you lose them and all of a sudden you then can't bring glucose into the cell so then the, so then what ends up happening is that glucose can't come into the cell your insulin is jacked way through the roof so the only place that sugar can go is where fat it can be it becomes fat on your body and you get fatter because of an insulin problem. And the insulin problem was driven by you not being willing to cut the sugar. And so you can keep eating sugar and say, well, this is what I like. And this is what, this is what I, uh, this is what, how I function best. This is what makes me feel the best. Yeah, of course it does. Cause it's a drug, but this left to right process here, because you know, it's called insulin resistance on the right there. And and here's here's the downward spiral. This is why people can't give it up. You become insulin resistant and then because you can't bring sugar in the cell, your cells start to say, "I need more energy." Like, what the heck's going on here? I I'm not getting the energy I normally get. And so they drive hormones to your brain that tell your brain to crave more what? Sugar. So now you're craving more sugar also. And it's jacking up your insulin even higher. And what does that downward spiral vicious cycle lead to? Type 2 diabetes. That's exactly what type 2 diabetes. This chart on the screen there is type 2 diabetes. So here's the beauty of that. Because it's not only obesity. It's not only inflammation. It's not only feeling like crap all your life. It's type 2 diabetes. But but this is why type 2 diabetes is reversible. Because if you go on a hardcore adv advanced plan, we'll talk about advanced plan at the end of this advanced plan diet. But then you, but and you and you exercise, you do the five essentials, and you cut the sugar. Well, then those insulin receptors they start growing back. You actually can regrow and resensitize your insulin receptors so that sugar can come into the cell again. You cut down the amount of sugar, your insulin starts to go down, and over 
between 30 and 90 days, depending on how bad you are, the insulin resistance turns back into insulin sensitivity and you can heal and you can have normal energy and you can have normal responses to that sugar. You can drop the weight and you can come completely out of that blood sugar disaster of type 2 diabetes. So listen, if you have type 2 diabetes, if you know anybody that has type 2 diabetes, first of all, you got to send this to them because this is life changing. Okay. And then you got to get them hooked up with the advanced plan um, because that will absolutely change their life. We've seen countless people reverse their type 2 diabetes when their medical doctors told them that they have to be on drugs to treat symptoms for literally the rest of their life. And most of those drugs drive insulin up even further just to treat the symptom. Because they'll say, oh, your blood sugars are high, so we're going to crank up your insulin even higher with injecting you with insulin or giving you metformin and these drugs that end up actually furthering the vicious cycle to the point where your pancreas stops, where you can even be ended up being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes because of the treatments. So instead, let's cut out all of that medicalized idea of treating symptoms and let's get to healing the body by healing the cells. Because if you can heal the cells, the body can heal. That is the way to do it. All right. We'll get back to that concept in just a little bit. I put a little myth bus two and a half in here because this, this one just needs to be touched on because people will be like, oh, I don't drink pop. I drink diet pop. Okay. Well, diet pop is actually worse in a number of ways because it has aspartame. Um, a lot of them do. And so you got this, this can cause brain damage, cause dementia. Um, a lot of people have migraine headaches and they, then they're addicted to diet Coke, um, seizures and degenerative brain disorders. It's actually a neurotoxin to drink diet Coke. It's neurotoxic. It'll eat away at your brain cells. Um, so you're not doing yourself any good by, by skipping the regular Coke. You might as well drink regular Coke, honestly. Um, episodic violence, learning disorders. Oh, and weight gain. How does it cause you to gain weight? Well, it's the same concept for any diet foods that you eat. Diet foods, meaning foods that don't really have calories. They're kind of fake foods. They've been marketed as something that won't make you gain weight because it's fat free. And when you start eating fat free or low fat or, or zero calorie, this or whatever, your body goes into a survival mode and they say, wait a minute, I just took in a volume of food yet. I'm not feeling like I'm getting any calories. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to the calories that I have on reserves. Well, where are the calories on reserves? Inside your fat cells. So you will actually, you will, your body, your hormones will protect your fat from being burned if you drink Diet Coke or if you eat diet foods. Isn't that something? So instead of trying to like, minimize calories. How about get your body healthy? Let's take, let's take a totally different approach than avoid trying to avoid obesity and trying to avoid fat and trying to avoid this and this and this. And let's just go to eating healthy foods, doing the right things for your body, feet flooding your cells with nutrients. Think about nutrients instead of, um, instead of calories, because you start to think about calories, you start to limit your calories, you do goofy things like diet Coke and fat-free foods and stuff, and it jams up your body, your hormones get thrown completely out of whack, you get fatter, sicker, more tired, and you die earlier. If sugar's so bad, what what can we use as a sweetener? Well, there are natural sweeteners, um, stevia, xylitol, so you get some of those pops if you're like really into drinking pop and you need it for whatever reason, Um, you know, they've got zevia, um, that's stevia sweetened. Stevia is not bad for you. You just don't want to do too much of it. Um, it can make you go to the bathroom. Or I think xylitol is the one that will do that. I don't really do either of these. I just drink water. Um, but you can you can drink stuff, whatever. It's I'm, I'm not judging anybody. It's just I'm, I'm not into this, the stevia stuff. I don't really like the taste of stevia. Just personally, I just don't like it. I don't think it tastes good at all. But a lot of people do. Xylitol is a decent one too. Um you know, like uh, it for like baking. I don't know. I don't bake either. So I don't even know what I'm talking about. Let's go to the next one. Myth bus number three, fat makes you fat. So that's a myth. Um, the idea of eating fat, making you fat, that that does not hold up in, in the scientific literature. Um, and you don't even need scientific literature. Just look at people who eat the ketogenic diet, which is 
uh, a higher fat diet and good healthy fats, they are skinny, they are ripped muscularly, um, they have incredible metabolisms, um, they have tons of energy. And why is that? Because fat actually is good for you. Fat helps you burn fat because of what it does for your hormones. When you eat good healthy fats, uh, there's components in these healthy fats that keep you lean, that keep you energized, that actually help you to burn fat because it puts your body into a fat burning zone. But that's only if you cut out the sugars. So you got to lower your sugars because you'll use the sugar reserves for energy first. Then you can get to the fat. And some of these fat, you know, you look at this screen here, That's this is the most delicious looking screen for me. I mean, this is the stuff that I love, you know, like salmon, um, butter, real butter is great for you, especially like that Kerrygold grass fed butter. Um, that's an excellent, excellent source of good, healthy fats. Um, beef, I, I love beef. I mean, obviously you want to go with grass fed beef. It makes a big difference. Olive oil, coconut oil, coconuts, um, avocados. These are like, these are like my favorite things. And so, so I, I love the fact that fats are good for you and that you want to eat them. There's a difference between good fats and bad fats. So like the bad fats are like the hydrogenated ones, the, um, the trans fats. You want to stay away from those as much, as much as possible, like canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, stay away from those. They're, they're terrible for you. Vegetable oil. Um, you really don't want to be cooking with those. You don't even want to be cooking with olive oil actually, because olive oil, although it's a really healthy oil to, to consume, it's not healthy at high heat. When you heat up olive oil on a pan and it gets to its smoke point, it ends up becoming a trans fat, um, which is really bad for you. And that ends up jamming up your cells and creating all sorts of cellular issues anyway. So you really don't want to do that. Good fats, like I mentioned, some of them, avocados, coconuts, even raw nuts and seeds, uh, raw cheeses and yogurts, obviously full fat yogurt. You don't want to do low fat yogurt. That's fake food. Um you know, uh, even eggs, you're going to get a ton of good healthy fats in eggs, especially keeping the yolks together. So, you, so when you cook the yolks, you break down the good healthy fats and vitamins and minerals from the yolk. The yolk is where the most nutrients are in an egg. So I try to keep the yolk intact um, and, and runny. And uh, even like for the kids, if they like scrambled eggs, I will, um, I'll only mix the yolk in at the end so that the yolk isn't cooking the entire time. And then it kind of preserves some of that runniness when I mix it all up together um, so that they can get the good healthy fats and the vitamins and minerals from there. And then good uh, wild caught salmon, um, smaller fish and sardines, uh, smaller fish just because they're lower on the, the, the food chain or whatever you call it so that it's uh, so yeah, see fats picture is blurry. Sorry, don't know what I don't know what to do about that for right now. Um, supplementation, you know this 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 thing isn't about supplements. But the bottom line is, if you need to supplement, then supplement. If if you're not getting um, great absorption from these fats, or if you're just not if you're not getting things that you need, definitely supplement. It's it can be really helpful. I'm not against supplements. I'm just I'm for getting as much as you can from your foods and changing your mindset about how you're getting your nutrients. You can't eat a crap diet and go on eating fast food and being just totally irresponsible with your health and then take a multivitamin and expect to be healthy. That's not the way that it works. Um, you can't just sit around taking capsules of super high quality um, vitamins and, and supplements all day long and expect to be healthy. That's not the way God designed your body. God designed your body to eat foods, to eat life-giving foods that have vitality in them, vibrancy. You know, a, a capsule of multivitamin can only have so much vibrancy, but you look at like an organic carrot, an organic apple, you know, um, grass-fed beef and, and coconuts and avocados. There's, the, there's vibrancy within these foods that you can't get from supplements. So you want to or like fresh juice, like juicing fresh vegetables is always going to be better than taking Max Greens. Sorry to Max Greens. I love Max Greens. I have it all the time. It's, it's, it's great for you. And you can get tons of good nutrients from it. But I'm not going to go and say, oh yeah, this is somehow better than 
juicing real organic vegetables and drinking it right on the spot? Uh, of course not. So, so you want to, if you're going to do supplements, you got to do the high quality stuff. Um, our brand is ultra high quality. I, I use our brand. I, I send our brands to, uh, to my family members and everything. Um, this is, uh, this is good. It's a little longer, but it's good. I'll just, I'll just briefly talk about it. Basically, basically it's this, when you have inflammation, it doesn't just create joint pain. It's going to create problems in your arteries. It's going to create problems in your organs as well. You know, you have, you have that top <coughs> vessel, it's wide open. And then because of eating crappy foods, what you don't see, even if you're not gaining weight on your midsection, what you don't see when you're eating sugar, when you're, what you don't see when you're eating those, those bad fats, when you're taking in toxins is that your arteries are inflaming as well. And so they're actually creating this narrower opening, this narrower lumen for the blood to go through, which would end up making the blood go through faster because you got to get blood to the, to your organs because you're delivering oxygen and nutrients and everything. And when that blood goes faster and it pushes on the walls of your arteries more so then this, this is one of the causes of high blood pressure because the, the arteries are are inflamed and narrowed. And so your blood pressure goes up. It's like you put your thumb over half of the end of a, uh, of a, of a garden hose. Well, the, the, the pressure builds up on the walls of, of the hose. And this is exactly what's happening in your arteries. And so then like you, you're, you, so you go to your doctor and they put a blood cu pressure cuff around your arm and it says something high and they give you a blood pressure medication. Oh, you need to lower your blood pressure. And you go, you leave there saying, Oh, Thank God I had that test. I had high blood pressure. Now the doc's given me a medication to solve my problem. Well, all that's happening is it's lowering the pressure of the blood going through by way of triggering uh, uh, a few different mechanisms in the nervous system, which is not, it's not healthy for you. What's healthy for you is that your blood pressure increased so that you can continue to deliver oxygen and nutrients to all of your organs and to your muscles and tissues. So when you just lower the blood pressure, what ends up happening? Well, you have all these side effects. You have all these, why, why does blood pressure medication have like four pages worth of side effects? Because you are, you are completely overriding your body's normal regulatory mechanism of keeping you alive. And so you're actually moving towards death and not towards life when you take a drug that simply inhibits a regulatory mechanism just so that you can get your next reading blood pressure cover on your arm, it says 120 over 80, you get a clean bill of health, but you are, are, are you, are you healthier than you were before? And that's the question. Are we healthier by taking this drug-based, symptom-based approach where you go into a doctor, you tell them this list of symptoms, and then they give you a drug for each symptom. It's like, well, why the heck was it? Why the heck were all these symptoms happening? Do these symptoms have anything to do with each other? Does this have anything to do with my lifestyle? Does this have anything to do with um, my nervous system? Like what's controlling all of this? Can we, can we figure this thing out? Or is this just like a plug and play kind of deal where this symptom equals this medication? And then you take all those medications and you might feel okay for a little bit, but then you've got the side effects, you've got the direct effects from them. And then is your problem really solved? And that's the bigger problem. That's the bigger issue. Is your issue actually solved from the inside out? Or are you just palliating symptoms over and over and over again until you die? And this is the difference in the this is the difference in the the philosophy of medicine versus the philosophy of chiropractic. They are complete opposites. Is there a place for medicine? Yes, absolutely. Is there a place for blood pressure lowering drugs? You know what? Yeah, I guess if, if you're gonna die because your blood pressure is chronically elevated and and it's it's gonna kill you in that moment, take a drug. Anytime that there's a crisis situation that's going to kill you without a drug, please take the drug and survive. And then figure out how to detox it afterwards. Why would you not? Right? I would. But when it comes to building health and building well-being, we've got to take a different philosophy about our health. We've got to take the philosophy of I'm going to increase health from the inside out. I'm going to do the things that, that God has designed my body to do. I'm going to eat the things that God has designed my body to eat in order to build health from the inside out. I'm going to get the whole body working better by thinking about what each cell needs. And that'll take care of these dramatic symptoms that have risen up. And it takes care of them, maybe not immediately, because uh, you had these 
lifestyle issues for a heck of a long time. Rome wasn't built in a day. Symptoms don't arise in a day. Healing takes time and repetition. And that, that applies to your adjustments with chiropractic, with these issues that have been there in your spine for like decades. And they're like, oh, I'm still hurting. Yeah, it's been like two weeks. You know, it applies to nutrition when you've been eating like crap all your life, like I was for such a long time. It takes time. It takes time. So be patient, be, be encouraged. But it's, it's got to be a different philosophy of health if you're going to heal. All right. Myth bus number four, it's the fat in meats that causes heart disease and cancer, osteoporosis, kidney disease. You know, the meats are not bad for you. Um, conventional meats can be, but, and for some people, they can't handle meats as well. But like it, to, to come out and just say in general, meats are bad for you is a very ignorant statement. There's some documentaries and movies out there that just trash um, meats. And they're not taking into account the quality of the meat. The quality of the meat is very different, especially in beef between like a grass-fed cow and a grain-fed cow. Okay, take a look at this. The problem with meat is this improper essential fatty acid ratio. Ideal ratio um, in, in your body, there's, like, there's omega-6s and omega-3s. We're not going to get too far into it. But the ratio you want is between 1 to 1 and 4 to 1. A typical person, 20 to 1. That's the inflammatory fats versus the good healthy fats. Ratio in a grass-fed cow, two to one. Perfect. That's what we want. Grain-fed cow, 21 to one. You're actually driving more inflammation when you eat grain-fed conventional beef. This is the problem. This is why it's such a vast difference, vast difference between eating organic, free-range, grass-fed, beef and eating conventionally raised beef. And we're not going to get into the cows thing because there's so much there, but those, those um, confined animal feedlots, CAFOs are disgusting. And the stuff that they do to these cows to just make sure that they, they pump them with antibiotics constantly so that they don't, so they don't get sick and die. They're pumping them up with growth hormones so they can fatten them up um, at a very young age. So they can send them to slaughter and take them to market and make money off of them. And this is the meat that you end up eating. It looks the same. You go to Meyer and you look at the different meats that are sitting there. It might look very similar on the outside, but what's on the inside of that is disease versus health with the grass-fed cows. Okay, so I strongly encourage eating grass-fed beef. And then you don't have to eat as much of it because you're getting a crazy number of nutrients um, that you're not getting from the grain-fed when you do grass-fed. Change your breakfast. Um, this is one way to change your breakfast is, is to just switch to something like a, like a, a <coughs> high quality whey protein or a, or like the pure path bone, bone broth protein. You just got to make sure if you're doing like a protein powder, you got to make sure it doesn't have any sugar or toxins. It has to be grass fed. It's got to be bioactive too. Bioactive means like, does your body recognize it, um, as it comes in as though it's a food. And so bioactive is a big one. Um, that's important as well. Intermittent fasting. I do intermittent fasting. So I wanted to throw it on here because, um, I've noticed a really good difference in my energy and my hormones. And especially if you're doing a ketogenic diet, like an advanced plan diet where you are, um, where you're trying to, uh, drive down the sugars, create insulin sensitivity, which is good. Um, and if you want to create more energy and especially detoxify, Intermittent fasting could be really, really good for you. This is this is how how simple it is, guys. It's not hard. There's a lot of very like uh, complicated ways to explain this. The bottom line is, skip breakfast. I know there's more to it, so don't don't come after me. But skip breakfast and take about 16 hours of the day fasting. That's the idea. So let's say. Let's say you are, let's see, that picture doesn't really show it too well, but um, it's the idea of it. So I stop, let's say I stop eating at eight o'clock at night. Um, great, you guys got me on the spot here to do math. But so then you don't end up eating until noon the next day. And what it does when you have 16 hours off in between your meals, it allows your digestive tract 
to detoxify and kind of reboot and reset. If you have digestive issues, this, this could be really good for you. It allows your um, it allows your brain to detoxify as well. When you keep when you keep eating foods over and over and over, like um, like snacking in between meals, and you're always always eating three or sometimes four meals a day, and then you're eating a, a, a crackers and charcuterie board late at night just because it tastes good and it's ten thirty at night and you're hungry, and you drink a glass of wine and you get up in the morning, you eat breakfast again. You're never really giving your digestive t- tract time to heal and to detoxify and get rid of all this crap. And so although um, winning your breakfast is a really good idea by eating a good healthy breakfast, another good way to do this is, is to just not eat breakfast at all. And your energy will start to increase. You'll start to figure it out. It'll, it might be a little hard those first those first few days, even the first week or so, um, but you'll end up um, reaping benefits big time in the end. And here's just some of those benefits. You know, you got losing weight, preventing type 2 diabetes. It's a great way to reverse that too. Boosting um, insulin sensitivity, like we said, even reducing blood pressure. You know, there's a, a bunch of different things. The fat levels, reducing stress. It's incredible. So what is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is is this right here. It's just you're, you're fasting for... Um, a larger chunk of the day, you can start with like a 12 hour fast, you know, just, just where you're not doing late night snacks. Let's just call it that. Maybe that's the first start. And then you go to like a, a 14 hour fast where you're just eating later in the morning, later in the morning, instead of first thing in the morning. And then a 16 hour fast is when you're going to start to see those benefits. If you want to go even further, if you get to 18 hours, a really cool thing happens. It's called autophagy or autophagy. Phage means um, breakdown or, or, or eating up. And what ends up happening is your body starts eating up old, bad, dysfunctional cells and killing off cells that are toxic or have been toxified. So autophagy is ultimately the goal when you're doing fasting, even if you're doing an extended fast, like a three-day fast or a five-day fast, which you really want to work your way up to. But the, the reason people do those fasts is not just because they hate food. <laughs> Trust me, they, they like food, but they're doing it because they want to detoxify their bodies and, and kill off some of the debris and some of the crap that has lodged up into your cells and, and into your system and get rid of them. And it actually happens in a survival mechanism that occurs when you stop eating for long enough. Your body will start to look into the reserves for energy, which reserves are in your fats. And so when they start to break down fat cells, these toxins come out and they start to be released and you can, you can get rid of them. So working your way up to an extended fast is a good idea, but, but when it comes to intermittent fasting, you can do that. You can do that perpetually. I've, I've been doing intermittent fasting. I I mean, at this point, probably two years, two and a half years, every single day. And it's been what I would call the fountain of youth. Um, It's been so helpful for digestion. I had a bunch of chronic issues um, a while back that that got resolved within the first two months or so of intermittent fasting. They were just gone. And I've had some other things come up, had some toxicity issues, even even that I'm still dealing with. But, uh, But intermittent fasting helps with all of that. All right. And then juicing. And there's not, I'm not going to talk too much about juicing, but juicing is just awesome. I mean, it's, you're taking in such a high density of nutrients when you juice vegetables and this isn't blending, this is juicing. You can blend, but then I would, if you like blend celery and, and carrots and and kale and stuff like that, like what's on that picture there, that's okay. But you just have so much fiber in there. It's almost like too much fiber. So you want to strain the pulp. You want to strain that, that, um, that smoothie of, of veggies through like a cheesecloth and just get the juice out of there because that's where you can really get this amazing healing response. Uh, I know there's been a lot of buzz about celery juice lately. Um, I, I think the buzz is um, is good. I think the buzz is is founded on on some good principles. When you drink celery juice first thing in the morning, it creates a detoxing effect. Um, so like does oh and does that break your intermittent fast? Uh, you know, there, there's a couple different schools of thought there. I, I'd say, I'd say no, not really. I mean, um, I mean, fasting is is fasting, but if if you're doing something like 
um, fresh green juice and you're not adding sugar to it, you can still maintain the effects of an intermittent fast. So I love juicing. I think it's incredible. Um, if you can't juice or if you don't have a juicer, I do recommend Max Greens because although it is, it's not as good as juicing, I'm never going to say that. However, it is, um, it's a great way to get an incredible amount of organic nutrients from vegetables, especially if you're not the type that just sits down and eats a big tub of spinach in front of the TV. Uh, like I'm not either. You're crunching on a, a leaf of kale. I don't do that either. I actually prefer juicing um, to get my vegetable intake. And I think you can get it in a much higher density way as well. All right, so drinking your veggies, um, like I said, with the Max Greens, anti-inflammatory, supports your immune health, promotes better digestion too. It's got some awesome uh, probiotics and digestive enzymes in there. It's loaded with 34 different vegetables. So when you when you juice, um, I'll juice like that picture there. It's like, what do we got? Carrot, celery, cucumber, ginger, lemon, whatever. This has 34 different ones. So you're getting this huge spectrum of of different, and that's where the powders can be really great actually, because it's so easy. You just put it in a little shaker bottle, shake it up with cold water and drink it. Uh, you can add it to smoothies. Um, anytime you make a fruit smoothie, please add some max greens. You don't end up tasting it. It doesn't taste bad in the first place, even just on cold water, but you don't end up tasting it. And then you're getting vegetables inside your fruit smoothie. Anytime we make yogurt for the kids, or if they're doing, um, or if they're doing a smoothie, we always add max greens in there to make sure they're getting just a little extra vegetable boost. Mythbus number six, I don't know what happened to five, but we're on six now. <laughs> Eating healthy is boring, tasteless, too hard. Can you eat like an elephant and uh, and look like a gazelle? Yep. You absolutely can. I eat a lot. Um, and I know a lot of people that are way fitter than me, and they eat a lot too. It's just about the quality of foods that you eat and taking care of your hormones. And so that's where these plans come in. Okay, guys? And here's the deal. this These plans... I've seen so much healing happen from these plans right here because getting healthy should be simple. Um, getting healthy should be simple. I should, I, I'm should. i going to quote Dr. Nick Wilson out of Indianapolis. He's a max living doctor and a, uh, and a, a radio show host, and he's he's got amazing content online. You want to look for him, Dr. Nick Wilson. And one thing that he loves to say and that he's kind of coined is that getting healthy is simple. It is not complicated. Disease is complicated. But health is simple. And this is where health becomes really simple because if, you, if you're if you following just strong, simple principles of nutrition, you're going to know exactly what you need to do at every step of the way. And you could take those values with you for every meal that you prepare, for every time you go out to a rec restaurant. You don't need to know the specifics. You'll understand based on the principles. But it takes knowledge. Knowledge is power. And for lack of knowledge, people what? They perish. So if you have the knowledge of, of what you need to eat and why and the how to do it, then you can take that with you and you can be successful. So get your Align Your Health books. This is your action step. Don't just watch this video, get all hyped up about the idea of healing and losing weight and, and whatever, and then not do anything about it because you won't get the results. It is on you now after today to go to the Align Your Health book and you got to check out the core plan and the advanced plan. And you've got to read through that and you've got to look at exactly what to eat and what not to eat. This is very important for your five essentials journey. The core plan, this is like a, a basic plan. This is the maintenance plan. This is like, you know, you weigh what you want to weigh. You're feeling pretty decent. You don't have chronic disease. You don't have hormone issues, but you want to start replacing the bad stuff for the good stuff. And you want to start eating higher quality foods. Go with the core plan. This is great for you. Um, health maintenance, disease prevention. You might lose a little bit of weight. But if you know that you've dug yourself into a hole, if you know that you've got to kind of up the ante a little bit with your health, you've got to take it to another level, you've got to heal from chronic disease, you know your hormones are out of whack, you know that that, that glucose insulin slide meant that that was about you. I was talking about you there, where you just can't seem to get the weight off no matter what you do, or you just can't seem to stop the sugar addiction, you just can't seem to break the chronic illness, it's the advanced plan. The advanced plan used to be called the healing diet, and it still is. I still call it the healing diet. You need the healing diet. And this is one that might be a little shorter term to use. You might not want to live on the advanced plan for the rest of your life. I basically am close to that right now, but I like to live on the core plan usually 
and then eat advance plan dinners and 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 do bouts of advance plan for weeks at a time to repair things. But if you want if you want to repair weight loss resistance, if you want to repair inflammation in your arteries and in your joints and in your gut and start to heal from the inside out, then it's the advanced plan. Is it hard? Uh yeah. If you haven't eaten well in a long time or ever, then yeah, it's it's not easy. But sickness, disease, obesity, low confidence, low self-esteem, poor sleep, cancer, heart disease, medications, doctor visits, early death, those are harder. So it's like hard easy or easy hard. Which one do you want to do? Because if you live easy right now, it's hard later. If you live hard right now, it could be really easy later. So easy hard or hard easy, you get to choose. Is the advanced plan hard? Yep. But only for a little while. And then you get used to it because your, your insulin sensitivity turns over and you start to feel really good. And then because you're feeling really good, you end up staying on it and coming back to it just like I do because I know that I feel so good on the advanced plan. So do the advanced plan. Three simple changes, sugars and carbs. You're going to eliminate the grains and sugars and even some, even most fruit. Um, and then uh, you're going to change your proteins. We're going to, we're going to perfect our, our proteins, which is replace the conventional stuff with natural protein sources. It shows you how to do that in the book. And then remove bad fats and replace them with good fats. So again, this is your review, guys. This is the book that you need to be reading. This is your Bible for eating, okay? This is this is an updated book. It was, it was recently written. It's got all the updated research and information and the principles that apply. It is principles of health and healing God's way from the inside out. So if you know you need to get healthy, if you have friends that you know that they need to get healthy and, they're been, and they've been kind of sent around the medical merry-go-round, where you go from one doctor to the next and get another medication for another symptom, which causes another side effect, which creates another symptom, which then creates another need for medication and more doctor visits and more testing and more blood work and all this crazy complicated stuff that really could be resolved if you just focused inward on five simple things. And that's the five essentials. So you've got nutrition now. We did mindset last week. If you missed mindset, you got to go back and watch that because that's the foundation for everything that we're talking about. But these are introductory classes. Like we said, we get deeper in some of the more advanced workshops. These are the introductions. Um, next week, we are going to be covering exercise. Okay. So exercise, movement, all of that, which is so vitally important to get your cells healthy, like we talked about. But for, for today and for right now, for this week, focus on nutrition Read the chapters in the, in the Align Your Health book on nutrition, and we'll see you again next week.